Hello, my witchy friends. I'm Figbury ASMR, and today I'm doing the ASMR book tag. And this tag was created by the magnificent. ASMR Fleur. So, thank you so much, Fleur. I am a witchcraft historian, so I'm in academia. And uh, anything to do with books uh, immediately appeals to me. So, let's start with number one. When did you start reading? What's your relationship to reading? It's a really good opening question. So, I started reading very early, and I raced ahead of my peers really quickly. At the start of grade two, I began reading Nancy Drew books. So I've got one here. Um, it's one of my favorites, naturally. Um, the Witch Tree Symbol, number 33. 33. And this is where set reading goals on Goodreads, and now since I'm in academia and read as my job, I don't as much anymore. Ideally, I read a couple of books per week, but sometimes, depending on my schedule, whether I'm teaching or researching, a week or two away from reading, just because I do so much of it. Um, but my reading goal is really just as much as possible in as reasonable uh, an amount of time as I can manage. 
Okay, number three. What genre do you enjoy reading the most and why? This is a tough one. Um, historical fiction is generally my favorite, although I do love gothic fiction too. Um, gothic fiction is very escapist and delicious and spooky. Um, I'm thinking of authors like Anne Radcliffe or what I have here, which is Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca. Um, but with historical novels, I love the sense of escapism. You've been lifted out of the present day and transported back in time. So, it's always a delight to see how accurately the author captures the period, especially if you're well informed about that part of history. Um, but really, I read widely and love all sorts of genres. Okay, number four. Is your favorite book of all time and why? It's a great question. My answer is always Lolly Willows. Lolly Willows. Lolly Willows. By Sylvia Townsend Warner. No question. I actually have a spinster aunt who is oppressed by her Victorian family and she <laughs> sells her soul to the devil, becomes a witch, finds her feline familiar, and lives this peaceful, wonderful life in a cottage in the British country. And this is my dream, so naturally, I love this book. I have two editions of it here, one hardcover and one softcover. Okay, the hardcover sounds actually a lot nicer. While I tell you about number five, Keep tapping on the hardcover here. Number five is What's the worst book you've ever read? Um, I don't have it with me, but as part of some witchy research I was doing for my doctorate, I had to read a book from the 1880s by James Compton Burnett called, um, I think it was 50, 50 Reasons for Being a Homeopath, so, like, practicing homeopathic medicine, and it was very dry and very dull, very bizarre. Um, some parts were okay, but, um, heavy in medical language, but it did give me a better idea of how the victory practiced medicine and how that relates to witchcraft. Number six is what is your favorite book-related trigger? And it says, show us. It's always been tapping on the outside of a book with a hardcover very slowly and close up. novel because they have the nicest, nicest um, hardcovers. Okay, number seven. 
who is your favorite author and what draws you to that writer? Again, it has to be Sylvia Townsend Warner. Um, I've been lucky enough actually to do research in her archives. Um, I've touched her manuscripts and letters. Um, I feel really deeply connected to her. She was queer and feminist and didn't really think about which genre she fit into. She just wanted to write what she wrote. And I think that's why her writing is so brilliant. It doesn't conform to any standards. So here's a little copy I have of, uh, of Cats and Elephants, which are some of her fairy tale stories. Number eight. What book has had the biggest impact on your life? Um, I have three uh, choices for this one, actually. Uh, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. The Diviners by Margaret Lawrence. Or Cat's Eye by Margaret Atwood. Um, I read Jane Eyre when I was very young and impressionable. And it really changed everything for me. Um, I saw that my future was in books. Um, and then with Cat's Eye and the Diviners, I read them in my third year of university. And also had a moment of affirmation that I was on the right path. Um, they're both brilliantly written coming-of-age stories um, about childhood and female friendships and motherhood. Um, they just, they articulate so many of my own feelings about life and writing and books. Okay, number nine. Do you prefer reading physical books or So I have an e-reader, which I use sometimes when I need something portable or if I'm reading in a different language and I want to look up words quickly, but I always do prefer physical books. I'm a little bit old school in that way. Okay, number 10. How do you choose which book? read next. So, because I work in research, the next book I read is usually dictated by my schedule, but um, when I do have free time to just read, I usually reach for something for pure enjoyment. Okay. I'll answer number 11 and 12 together. Um, do you have any reading rituals or habits? And do you annotate your books? If yes, what's your method? So, I always need a cup of tea and a highlighter or a pen for annotation. And I have to be wearing comfortable clothes. So, yes, I do annotate my books. Um, just small notes and highlighting, sticky tabs. Um, and my books are well loved because of this. You have to make your mark on them, especially if you're teaching and need to reference things on the Okay, number 13. What's a quote from a book you still think about often? Okay, um, let's see here. I have a quote from Aurora Lee, which is Elizabeth Barrett Browning's novel in verse. So it's kind of like a long poem.
I, who have written much in prose and verse, for others' uses, will write now for mine, will write my story for my better self, as when you paint your portrait for a friend who keeps it in a drawer and looks at it long after he has ceased to love you, just to hold together what he was And it's just so full of longing and the sense of compassion. She declares that she must write her story for herself. And that has always stayed with me from her early. Okay. Number 14. What's the last book? you read that you couldn't put down. Um, it's actually Mexican Gothic. Um, I couldn't put this one down. It really feels like such a special callback to the old Victorian Gothic narrative register. Okay, number 15. What's a book you've read recently that surprised you? Okay, so I'm currently reading Mona Cholet's In Defense of Witches, The Legacy of the Witches and Why Women Are Still on Trial. But I'm reading it in French, so it's called Sorcière, la puissance invincible des femmes. Um, and honestly, I think I'm just really surprised by how wonderful it is to read a book on a subject I know lots about, but in a different language. Um, it's a really good way to strengthen your comprehension skills, <laughs> but it is an excellent book in English, um, and I highly recommend it as I know a lot of you are witchcraft aficionados like me. Okay, number 16, what's a book that disappointed? So the thing with me is that when books disappoint me, I usually donate them to a little free library in my area. I just try to keep my shelf, um, my shelves, I've got three giant bookshelves, as curated as possible. But sometimes a book that disappoints me is sort of a funny memory, like this one. It's called Candlelight Spells, the modern witch's book of spellcasting, feasting, and natural healing. And I didn't expect much when I thrifted it, but it's so hilariously outdated, um, and it reminds me of a lovely day that I had. So I keep it for that reason. It's from the 90s. I need to do a video on everything inside of it. There's just such a little context on the spells and recipes that it's kind of humorous. Okay, number 17. What book do you think has the prettiest cover? So one of my favorite books in my collection is this special edition of The Hobbit. It has this gorgeous golden bordering and its own slipcase to protect the book itself. And I think this might be the tingliest cover in my collection too, which is number 18. So just listen to these. Okay, 
Okay. Number 19. What book do you think has the ugliest cover? The ugliest cover. Okay. I love The Witching Hour by Anne Rice. It's one of my favorite books. But before you come for me, I love it. I love it. But this cover isn't the best. I'd really like to get a nicer copy because this is just a standard issue mass market paperback. It's just very bland, which doesn't really match the whimsical, magical New Orleans witches inside the Number 20, what is your favorite trope? Um, I love the fallen angel trope you find in a lot of Victorian literature. That whole Victorian angel in the house stereotype um, flipped on its head. Like the mad woman in the attic trope from Jane Eyre. And... The romantic in me also loves any trope that involves a marriage plot. Number 21. What's a book you've read that you would recommend to everyone? Just Kids by Patti Smith. Easily. No matter who I recommend it to, uh, they seem to love it. It's very rock and roll, but lucidly, poetically written. And you don't even need to know much about Patty and her music to enjoy it. It's just such a magical snapshot of the big era in New York City. Okay, number 22. Do you prefer standalone books or series, and why? Always standalone books. Um, I can't remember the last time I read a book in a series. Okay, number 23. Do you have a favorite book to movie adaptation? The BBC Pride and Prejudice. Um, my apologies in advance to those of you who love the Kira Knightley version. I am a Colin Firth is Mr. Darcy um, believer. I'm unshakable in this opinion. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Have you seen the scene where he jumps into the water? Yeah. It isn't necessarily a movie, but it is an excellent miniseries, and if you love Austin and haven't seen it, watch it now. You need to. It's perfection. Number 24. What is a book that you've been meaning to read for a long time, but haven't gotten around to yet? Um... Magic Lessons by Alice Hoffman. I've had it on my nightstand for ages and just haven't gotten around to it. She wrote Practical Magic, which is of course one of my favorite movies. And Magic Lessons is the It takes place in the 1600s and traverses England and Salem. So I really want to read it and see. Okay, and we've reached the last question. Last question. It's a wonderful, wonderful book tag. Do you have a particular book that you like to revisit or reread every few years? Uh, a rank 
Nickel and Dime by Madeline Langle, um, or also Virginia Woolf's Diaries. The first one, uh, Wrinkle and Dime, is a book from my childhood. As you can see, it has such a beautiful cover. It's just incredible. And I love the idea of traveling through time and space when I was a kid. Um, it's still really holds up. And as for a book that I revisit that's newer to my life, not from my childhood, I read through Wolf's Diaries. There's a whole bunch of them, um, but they're just so full of longing and these beautiful, vivid depictions of London in the 20th century. There's multiple volumes, but I particularly love volume one because she's so young and um, you can trace the evolution of her writing from this point. Okay. So that is all of the more in-depth questions in the book tag. But there's also a quick fire this or that this or that at the end here so fiction or non-fiction um definitely fiction um just because I love reading a story I love non-fiction for a lot of other reasons like history books in particular, but oftentimes I read non-fiction to contextualize fiction. Okay, hardcover or paperback? I'm actually more of a paperback person. They just feel more lived in, more comfortable to hold, less heavy on the hands. So, I like and they're less expensive. Romance or thrillers? Romance, always. <laughs> um, I feel like I was born and raised around the period where uh, romance novels and um, things like Confessions of a Shop and all but I, I can't get away from what they used to call chick lit, chick lit. Um, but also a, a traditional like Harlequin romance sometimes really hits the spot. Comedy or tragedy? Uh, definitely comedy. Classics or contemporary? As you can see with all of my different um, picks today, it's always classics. Library or bookstore? Um, honestly, a bookstore. I love seeing what the like bookstore's aesthetic is going to be. You know, I love a secondhand bookstore. Very dusty. Indoors or outdoors? Outdoors, for sure. Sofa or bed? Bed, always. I am a Victorian invalid woman at heart, so. In silence or with music and sounds? Yeah, preferably in bed in silence is how I like to read, so. And book talk or book tube? Um, I am on TikTok if you are interested in following me. Um, the link is in the description of this video. Uh, so thank you again to ASMR Fleur for creating this book tag. And if you made it this far, you're officially in the coven. So why don't you subscribe? We'd love to have you here. You have a very restful sleep.